Hello students. In yesterday's video or in fact something which I recorded yesterday uh, about mathematical techniques, I forgot to mention or explain what is a scalar function and a vector function. So scalar function mathematical definition is a function f of x1 up to xn of one or more variables whose range is one dimensional. Scalar, function are, scalar functions are also called as scalar valued functions. Vector function is of one or more variables whose range is three dimensional. Now scalar quantity and a scalar function are two different things like mass, temperature, etc. is a scalar quantity. Whereas scalar function is a function there can be more than one variables, but they change in only one dimensional. Their change is only one dimensional. <clears throat> Vector function is a function of one or more variables whose range is three dimensional. That means a function will depend upon a variable, maybe one or two. However, that particular variable is changing in one dimension only. Supposing I have a flu flow of water and I'm trying to analyze something with it. Then I know I cannot restrict myself to only one dimension. I have to consider at least three dimensions. In fact, vector function in general can be defined for n dimensions. However, if I'm just looking at temperature, then temperature change is not three dimensional. If I go from one point to another point, it is a one dimensional change. Therefore, it can be under certain restrictions a scalar function. So it is very important for us to understand which kind of a function we are using. Like in divergence, we are going for a, sorry, in gradient, we are going for a scalar function. Whereas for divergence and with, uh, curl, we need a vector function. Now, scalar functions are also called as scalar valued functions and vector functions are also called as vector valued function. Now, understand, let us understand what is a scalar field. Uh, I am going to make a separate video on what is this scalar field, what, what is this vector field and something how it can be a characteristic, I'm sorry for this disturbance, uh, characteristics for electric field and magnetic field. Now, scalar field is a field or is a function that gives us a single value of some variable for every point in space. I repeat, scalar field is a function that gives us a single value of some variable for every point in space. Now take, take an example. I have there is some figure. It's a earth and there is a map, but which is a colored map. The image in the figure shows the nighttime temperatures measured by some instrument called as thermal emission spectrometer instrument. Various colors on the map represent the surface temperature. This map, however, is limited to representing only the temperature on a two-dimensional surface and thus it does not show how temperature varies as a function of altitude. In principle, a scalar 1 to 4 field provides, means maybe the scalar field 1, 2, 3, 4, a values not only on a two-dimensional surface in space but every point in the uh, every point in space. Now, as I am going to make a separate video on this, I am not going to spend more time on this. The last portion, if you have not understood, forget. That is in principle, what is a scalar 1 to 4 field, etc. Now, let us go for a vector field. Vector, it is a, a vector is a quantity, as you all know, which has both magnitude and direction in space. Vectors are used to describe physical quantities such as velocity, momentum, acceleration, force associated with an object. However, when we try to describe a system which consists of a large number of objects like a moving water, a snow falling, rainfall, etc. We need to assign a vector to 
each an individual object. For example, let us consider a falling snowflakes. Why I am taking example of snowflakes? Because they organize in some pattern and they settle. Water is very difficult to imagine as shown in the figure. As snow falls, each snowflake moves in a specific direction. The motion of the snowflakes can be analyzed by taking a series of photographs. At any instant of time, we can assign each snowflake a velocity vector which characterizes its movement. The falling snow is an example of a collection of a discrete bodies. On the other hand, if we try to analyze the motion of continuous bodies, such as fluids, a velocity vector, then needs to be assigned to each and every point in the fluid at any instant of time. Each vector describes the direction and magnitude of the velocity at a particular point and time. The collection of all velocity vectors is called as velocity vector field. An important distinction between a vector field and a scalar field is that the former, that is the vector field, contains information about both direction and the magnitude at every point in the space, while only a single variable is specified for the latter. So this is the essential difference. I take one more example which I have not given here. Like consider a room and there are many points in that room or consider your classroom and each and every student is sitting on one bench. If I say the temperature of X student is 30 degrees, Y student is 35 degree. And then if I analyze, it becomes a scalar field the way I had see, shown in the earlier slide. It's only a temperature change or temperature I'm just mapping. Then it is a scalar field. But instead, if I want to know in what direction the temperature change is maximum, if I want to know how the air gets heated and how air is air molecules are flowing from one point to another point, then I have to consider a vector field. Now, it will depend totally upon what quantity I am looking. If I am looking velocity, then it is a velocity vector field. If I am looking acceleration, it is a acceleration uh, vector field. So, I'm, as I'm going to make more video, one more video on scalar field and vector field, we go for now some problems. I'm do, going to do it quickly. Like find the gradient of following functions. Function is x to 4, y squared, z cube. So just differentiate it, x, x raised to 4, it will be differentiated with respect to x. So other quantities will be 0. So it is 4x cube, x cap y squared is 2y y cap and z squared z cube i'm sorry is 3 z squared it's a straightforward thing then second is x squared ln y z cube now when i am going to differentiate with x the other two quantities naturally are constant so it will be x squared is 2x then z cube and ln y remain as it is as a constant which is multiplied with the differentiable different uh, differentiated quantity similarly the next will be x squared z cube remains the same and ln y will be 1 upon y d by uh, dy of ln y is 1 upon y and similarly the third term now you can you will be able to do the third problem also next is find the divergence of following functions now when i it is a v is this is a vector function so x x y x cap minus 2 y squared z y cap plus z cube z cap and some some more function is given now what you have to calculate is del dot v that is a scalar product uh, or dot product of the two vectors uh, like del is also a vector and this is also a vector now this is a pretty straight job and you get this particular thing similarly di calculate the divergence of this field del dot v is del vx upon del x, del vy upon del y, del vz upon del z. Now, each is the going to get differentiated by 1, 1, 1 plus so this will be only 3. Then third is find the curl. Curl is 
v is x y x cap plus 2 y squared z cap z y cap and z cube x z cap then you have one more function x plus y x cap y plus z y cap and z plus x z cap and sin x x cap cos y y cap so first is again this is a vector function which is given as x cap x x y x cap etc now what you need to calculate is del cross v and then substituting means if this is going to be zero you can very easily find out that this is what is going to be zero what not is going to be zero and you get del cross v is equal to 2 y squared x cap plus x z cap i will request all the students to solve it of your own and this, these are just the guidelines so similarly for the next similarly for the third one uh, laplacian if you have time and energy if you wish you can solve these problems i am also going to post as an assignment so if you are not able to copy it right now you don't worry about it these are only the solutions so this is the one now uh, next video i will go for cylindrical coordinates and something more about how to differentiate in cylindrical coordinates etc